Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about plopping. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. There are so many methods of curl training that you can engage in if you've just started CGM and plopping is one of them. Plopping will ensure that your hair does not stretch out while it is drying. So, you've used some beautiful leave-in conditioner, you've scrunched your hair to encourage the curl pattern, you've even put gel very diligently and you've scrunched and you haven't pulled apart your curl clumps and you've done all of that work. You've even been super duper delicate with your gel while applying. You haven't pulled apart any of your curl clumps. Now, all of the products that you've used on your hair are definitely very, very heavy. And it's going to weigh the hair down, especially when the hair is drying. As it dries, the clumps are going to stretch out because of the sheer weight. And it's going to result in a looser wave or curl when it dries and it's going to eat up your shrinkage. Now, to ensure that this doesn't happen, we do something called plopping. Basically, what plopping does is it holds your hair in the scrunched up position while the gel forms a thin little cast, which means that the gel doesn't get very, very hard. It is not completely dry, but we want the gel to form a light cast so that the curl clump continues to stay together when you take your plop off and wait for it to air dry or diffuse. Plopping is basically done to ensure that the gel forms a light cast which means that it starts to get a little hard. The hair is held together and shrunken up so that the hair is encouraged to form a tighter curl or a wave. Plopping will basically encourage more shrinkage and more definition in your results. Which is why plopping is a fantastic method of curl training especially if you've just started CGM and listen, if you have wavy hair, then plopping is going to be your best friend. Additionally, plopping will ensure that you do not disturb the curl or the wave during, during the initial phases of the drying process without you having to worry about your hair getting messed up. So let us see how I plopped my hair today. I'm using an old oversized cotton t-shirt and placing it on the bed in a tee which means that the sleeves are away from me. I'll fold once at the sleeve area and twice at the bottom waist area. Then I'll shake my hair out once again to make sure that nothing is sticking to my roots. Then I'll slowly bring my hair together and lower it into the t-shirt. Careful at this step, don't rush it, else you'll pointlessly cause more frizz. Now bring the bottom folded bits to your forehead and using it like a stretchy band, wrap it around your head. Stretch the fabric slightly while you're wrapping so that your head is secure and tight in the t-shirt. Bring the edges together and hold on, do not let go. You see where I'm pointing to right now? Hold both these edges together and don't let go. Now, bring the neck area of the t-shirt to the back of your head and place the fabric down. As you slightly stretch the t-shirt, bring the sleeves to the front of your head. Secure it in a knot. Adjust the forehead area so that it's not super tight. Make sure you have enough breathing room by adjusting the fabric around your head. If you have any hangy bits, tie them up. And there you go, this is how I plop my hair and this is what the plop looks like. Okay, I feel like I want to explain this again and this time I want to talk you through it while I do it. It will be a little awkward but this way I'm hoping you will never forget how to, you know, plop your hair. So okay, uh, when you take the t-shirt, right, make sure that you know the sleeves are away from you so your hands will match up with your hands if you had to ever lie down on it hopefully you don't forget by that explanation you can't see all of my hair but that's just the camera angle bear with me first i've got a fold i'll fold once at the top 
that should be sufficient and at the bottom it could be two three times depending on how big your skull is uh, so yeah so now shake out your hair okay so that nothing is sticking to your scalp and very 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 gently lower your head down now when you lower your head down you'll notice that this folded part is not always going to line up with your forehead so you fold it once more so that it's somewhat close to your forehead okay at least above your eyebrows then you take these and while you stretch you stretch a little bit and you bring them together now this is the important part this area don't let go because this little stretchy thing this is what is going to keep your block in place as you can see there's a bit of tension here because when i brought both the sides together i kind of pulled and stretched a bit so yeah i'm holding on to this i'm not letting this go this is a very chhodna mat pakre rehna chhodna mat pakre rehna situation okay you do not let this go then you take this area right and you see that this lines up here and while pressing down a little bit okay you want to you want to create that same kind of tension that you created with those two areas so yeah create that tension which means i'm somewhat pulling and stretching this out when i'm lining this up with the bottom area and then i'm going to take this then i'm going to tie once adjust this so that it's fine right it's not super tight it's not super loose and then if you want pull and tie again this is super duper secure now you can do your housework you can do your chores you should be good this is not going anywhere okay so it's been around 30 minutes and i'm going to take out the plop right now i thought i'd show it to you guys say hi to my doggy she's keeping me company so now that it's super cold i like to put the heater on as you can see there and this is just a shampoo cape that i use when i let my hair down because i hate the feeling of wet hair on my shoulders the audio is going to be shite but i don't have a vlogging camera so this will have to do so i'm just going to let the plop down and of course before i let the plop down if you don't know how much time you should keep it on for you should probably poke your hands through and see that the gel has formed a bit of a cast so this is my hair while my hair is drying i do not touch it okay the most i'll do is this and then just keep it on this side for a bit and then after that i'll drop it to the front take my hand and do this so let me check in in what 30 minutes okay so it's been half an hour and i have not touched my hair this is the back of the shampoo cape so even if my hair touches my clothes it's not going to get wet um let me show you once more it's going to take me around 6 hours to completely dry my hair and i think it's going to get really boring to put all of that into the video but one last thing that i want to show you so yeah i'm just going to take my hair shake it a bit and put it to the side now what i will do is i'll bring it all to the front right because it makes no sense for you to sit like this for what 4 5 6 hours and not have back rest so let me just show you how i do it i'm sitting down right next to the heater and no hair is on my back per se but it's all to this side right so what i can do is i can sit down relax nothing is behind my shoulders as you can see all of my hair is to the side right but
but there's nothing on my back, so I can just relax, sit down, watch some TV. But I'm not going to touch my hair. Every half an hour, I'm going to turn the hair from side to side. Once more, let me show you what that looks like. So I'll take my hair, drop it to the front, and do this. Again, let me show you. Drop it to the front and do this. If I want to drop it to the back, I can do so. Drop it, bring it to the side. Drop it, bring it to the side. Touch it with my sleeve and yep, that is about it. The hair has definitely formed a cast, but if I keep touching it, I will be scrunching out the crunch and I'll also lose the definition. So I really do not want to touch my hair much at all. So yeah, this is gonna be my routine for the next five to six hours. And that is how I dry my hair. Hopefully this helped a bit. Okay, I thought I'd give you guys one last update and then I'll end the video. It's been two hours and I've been air drying my hair. I've been moving my hair from side to side to incorporate airflow. Now, how do I know when my hair is completely dry? I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm just gonna put it through and I'm gonna squish. If I squish and I feel like it is wet, that means obviously it hasn't dried completely. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this. There's no point taking you through many updates where my hair keeps getting dry. I mean, it's the same thing. This is all I'm doing, that is it. Hopefully you guys can see this properly. I take my hair, drop it all to one side, and there, that's about it. Now listen, is all of this super excessive? I mean, of course it is. I'm not denying that, but this is something that I do once a week, and so I feel like it's worth it. That's all I had to say, back to the video. Okay, so today I left my plop on for 40 minutes. And how much time should you plop for? There's no right or wrong answer here. It is all trial and error. Just like the other things when it comes to taking care of your hair, most of it is trial and error. So what you can do is plop for 30 minutes, see if your waves or your curls are getting wonky. Like for example, if I plop my hair for a really long time, then I notice that my waves definitely look a little wonky. This doesn't happen so much right now, but at least in the beginning, I noticed that any more than 30 minutes and my hair used to look wonky. But nowadays, I can keep my plop on even for an hour. It doesn't matter. So how long should you plop for? You should check your hair. When you, when you have the plop on, put your hand in and look to feel your hair to see if it is formed a thin little cast. It doesn't have to be super hard. As long as you feel that your hair is gloopy and it's formed a slight cast, then it's okay to let your hair down. When you let your hair down, what do you do? Do not touch your hair. Don't touch it while it's drying. Just don't do it. But you definitely want to encourage some kind of air flow. Otherwise, your roots are going to take really long to dry. So when you take your hair out and your air drying, you definitely want to encourage some kind of air flow so that the hair doesn't take too long to dry, especially near the roots. Another thing that you can do when you're air drying your hair is take your hands. All right. Do this and move your hair to the other side. All right, you haven't disturbed your hair per se. Again, take your hand. And there you go. Those are some ways in which you can encourage some kind of airflow and you can make sure that your hair is moving in all directions. Because again, when your hair is moving in all directions, you're helping that air flow, especially near the roots. And you're also encouraging all of that volume, especially if you flip your hair from side to side. So yeah, that is all I had to tell you about plopping. So hopefully you gained some value from this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram to see more from me. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. 
My name is Michelle and I will see you in the next one. Bye.